And we're back, the redneck Superman with Jamie. <laughs> What's going on, Jamie? We're back. It's been a minute. It's been a long week. <laughs> it's been a long week. For sure. Yeah. So, first thing you wanted to discuss was... My new diagnosis. You got a new diagnosis. Well, I think I've talked about this on my channel before. Some of the health struggles that, you know, I've been through for most of my life. And I got diagnosed with anaclosing spondylitis. Spongebob-itis. I'm not making fun of it. It's, it's I don't actually really serious. Yeah, it is serious. I'm not trying to make fun of it. But it's, it is hard to say. And I've seen AS is the, is the, is the acronym for it. Is yeah. The, is the, can you say it again? Anaclosing spondylitis. Anaclosing spondylitis. Okay. It's like having arthritis of the spine. Okay. It's an autoimmune disorder or an inflammatory disease. After so many years, you finally got diagnosed with something that you had, had no clue about. Yeah, yesterday I was relieved. Today I'm, I'm at the angry stage because I have had so... Like, I've suffered with so many things since I was probably in my late teens and early 20s. And I'm just so angry that it's taken me so long to get a diagnosis um, when I was I think I was like 18 or 19 the first time I threw my back out and you know thought that I had done something to my back I remember I couldn't walk for like almost a week you know but at the time I was you know I was a senior in high school I was working full-time and I also didn't live at home with my parents like I lived paying rent yeah. <laughs> in high school and it was it was difficult you know so you know most of my early 20s I, I didn't have health insurance um, when I was 22 I got diagnosed with iritis and that is a red flag for this disease I got iritis I almost went blind in my right eye. Which is arthritis in the eye, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's arthritis of the colored part of your eye. It's like your iris, the colored part. And it was so bad that it kind of fused my, my lens to my iris. And I, I still suffer with it to this day. And I've also gotten iritis in my left eye a few times since. And then I was um, probably 24 when I was working, um, I, I think I had like two jobs at the time, but I couldn't walk on my foot for almost a year. I was limping around and could not figure out what was wrong with my foot. You know, doctors couldn't find anything. And when you're that young and you go to um, the doctor, you know, especially not having a primary care because I didn't have insurance, you know, you, they, they tend to think that you're drug seeking and when you're really young and you're complaining about back pain and hip pain and knee pain and things like that, they just assume automatically that you're just trying to get drugs and they, they don't listen to you. They're doctor shopping. You think you're yeah. Doctor shopping. And, and it was difficult. You know, I, I got married and had some kids and had, you know, had these spells where sometimes I couldn't, I couldn't walk. And um, it would take a few weeks and, you know, I remember getting prescribed steroids at one point and that worked. And, you know, I've complained about all these problems and, you know, a lot of people in my life thought, you know, that I was just um, exaggerating it or I was too young to it. It got to the point where I stopped complaining about my pain altogether, especially back pain because it you know, 22, 24, 25 years old, and you're complaining about horrible back pain, nobody wants to listen to you, especially older people. They just assume, you know, like, you're just exaggerating or you're too <coughs> young to know what real back pain is. So I yeah. learned very early on that it was just something that I could not even talk about. And it's amazing you went through pregnancies with this. I know. It was really and hard. It, trust battle. me. And the reason we want to do a podcast about this is if there's anybody in the community out there or anybody that hears this, if you have any experience with this, you're more than welcome to comment and leave some advice on how you deal with pain or what to stay away from, you know, because we know doctors start prescribing just willy-nilly drugs sometimes, you know, when they do, well, certain drugs, not all drugs, but yeah, they just try to throw, start throwing darts at a map and trying to fix problems and hoping this works. And 
It was so funny because what led to my diagnosis is um, an issue with my finger. I know it sounds so yeah, small. Yeah, you've been complaining about like a finger for a minute. I mean, it's been a while. But the little joints in my finger started hurting, and my right index finger kind of swelled up, and it was it was hurting. And then, you know, I have um, a family member that was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and I had a talk with my doctor, like, listen, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, rheumatoid arthritis runs in my family, and I'm having these problems. And at this point, I didn't even complain about my back pain or my hip pain anymore even though there's times where it's like debilitating to me. So my doctor was like, okay, well, we'll do some labs. And then I, I tested positive for the marker for anaclosing spondylitis. Yeah. And, you know, the more I, I spent last night researching, and I actually reached out to um, Pagel today. Yeah, we called Pagel. Pagel, because he... Pagel he, suffers from the same thing. And the same kind of story. He couldn't... He had problems with his feet when he was at his left foot. When he was working, and that led to the, the diagnosis. But because he's a man, and this um, disease most often is uh, more men than women get it. It's kind of rare for women to get it. Shout out to Pego and Lisa. Shout out. <laughs> um, so, you know, I could see where, you know, it's easier for a male to get diagnosed than a female. Um, but it, it just... I've suffered with it my entire life, and, you know, hopefully... And you and Pago both had jobs where you were working on a concrete floor, hard concrete. There was times know. where I worked two jobs yeah. at the same time, and I and remember worse, going man. through a period before I had children where I drank a lot, and it was to kind of, like, be able to cope with being in so much pain all the time. Yeah. Because at the time, I, you know, I, I had different pain and, and then now that I look at all the symptoms together as a whole it's like I have every single one and it just makes me so angry that nobody put this together until now yeah you know and it probably you had some crappy doctors before that I've been with you you've had some crappy yeah, doctors I that I didn't like and they weren't spending the money they didn't have the money to you know do the test they weren't willing to waste that time and that money or that's how they seen it was a waste of time and money just to test for everything Chronic pain is, it just sucks. I mean, it affected my marriage. It affected a lot of aspects of my life. And, you know, had I known earlier on what was wrong, I think it would have saved me a whole lot of, you know, um, pain in the long run. You know, it was hard to um, raise a family and be okay every day and then be in excruciating pain and not being able to sleep at night. And uh, I don't want to cry. It's just been tough, but you know, if if you're young and you have pain, don't don't stop at one doctor. Don't give up. You know, your pain is very if it, it you know, I used to tell my my ex-husband, you know, well, if I'm just imagining this pain, then I can imagine it going away and it's not going away. Yeah. You know, and it's hard because people don't want to listen to you, especially when you're young and you're having so many problems with pain. Because nowadays with the opiate crisis, they just think that you're seeking drugs. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a real thing. I mean, but a simple blood test was all it took to get me diagnosed. Just a simple blood test and testing positive for this marker, H, what is it, A, ALH. I don't know. I, don't, I forget what it is. Pagel mentioned it when he was on the phone with him I might put it in the description if I can look it up, but. Yeah, but we've been trying to, you know. To do, do, do more holistic things like we've been eating like avocados every day that has really helped us both out a lot you've seen, you've seen some differences yeah it's actually my blood and, pressure is kind of lower now yeah it really dropped the blood pressure points a lot and it's that's not no bs when you read about the, the, the avocados we've been buying them a, a week supply at a time and just eating one a day we drink our or we drink herbal teas yeah herbal tea i think is i've always said matcha always always herbal tea is, is a great thing and just, you know, going to the gym and get some more physical activity and, you know, to help with some of this stuff. And that's before you had the diagnosis. We had already started doing this, you know, so, but you have noticed, you know, some improvement, you know, when we're going to the gym every day, you, you've seen a pr improvement. Yeah, moving yeah. around is key when you have this um, disease. Use it or lose it. If Yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. And they also call it like bamboo spine. Parts of your, 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 your vertebrae is confused together. And it's really painful, and I've always noticed, like, I've, you know, my hip hurts all the time, and 
You yeah, know? for a while the hip thing's been coming up with you. Like we've a been lot. to Walmart, like my hip is hurting, you know, and we got we you know kind of rush it through, try to make sure, you know, because you're in a lot of pain. And uh, I, I've been noticing that for the past few months that the hip pain keeps popping back up. Yeah, and I don't get it because when I was younger, I was pretty physically fit. You know, I wasn't. I mean, I might have been 10 or 15 pounds <laughs> overweight. Were you jogging two miles every day or running two yeah, miles a day? Yeah, and so to them, for them to, like, you know, they couldn't blame it on, on weight, you know, because nowadays if you're a few pounds overweight, they, they just tell you to lose weight. They don't they don't want to look to see I've if noticed, you have yeah. anything I've wrong with you. I've noticed that with doctors, they're like, weight and cigarettes. You know, they're going to hit those. Right. If you've got any of those wrong with you, they're going to tell you. But... If you go to a doc, Hulk Hogan goes to the doctor, he'll tell you he's obese, overweight. By the definition, you know, he's obese, yeah. overweight. You know, but that doesn't mean he's not healthy, you know, because of just his size and his muscular on his frame. But, so every doctor you go to, you're, you're always going to be a little bit, a few pounds over, no matter who you are. Nobody's perfect. But that's why I haven't really been in too many chats here lately, because I've just tried to absorb all the information I well, can. We've had doctor's appointments, we've had other things to do, We, I mean... We're not always around, you know. We have real life stuff to do. Speaking of doctor's appointments, I got a bone to pick with somebody. A bone to pick? It's not coronavirus, is it? No, thank God. You have no. to go to my channel to find out about coronavirus, okay? Go to Redneck Superman. Yeah, because I got a video with 83,000 views. And if you guys are in a chat and you want to, like, say what's up to Redneck, type a three instead of the E in Redneck because you can't type Redneck in a chat, I've noticed. And it frustrates the hell out of me. But who was it? I think it was Tara the other day. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's a, she typed it with a three. I'm like, I see you had problems. She's like, I tried two or three times. It didn't work. I think it was Tara. I'm not really sure who it was. It might have been Nora. so sweet. I like her. I've been get, I'm, get, I'm After hearing Tara going past, Pagels. I'm kind of liking this Tara thing. I know. I'm kind of liking her too. I was like, man. Oh, wait. Before you bone pick, you said there was a comment you wanted to shout Devada out. Devada. That was the sweetest Thank comment you. today. I know that you didn't know about my diagnosis today. And it just like really um, almost made me cry a little bit because I was thought it was just so sweet and kind of lifted my spirits and... You know, um, who else? Ray Ray, I'll probably call you tomorrow. I haven't called you and Ray talked Ray. to you about it yet. <laughs> Ray Ray! Ray Ray! Um, but let's pick this bone with Queenie. Queenie. Queenie, Queenie, Queenie. What's Queenie doing? I seen her try to pop on a panel the other day with a bunch of people. Is that where we're going with this? Well, number one, she tried to call me out when I was at the doctor, and I was a little pissed about that. Oh, because... yeah, I remember, because I didn't know who I was making a video about. <sighs> I know. <laughs> and, like, and, ten people well, popped up and go, he's talking about me. <laughs> you know, me and Allison live, we've been friends for years. We've gotten in several, like, tiffs, and it was something that was between her and I. You know, Queenie and them at that time, I don't even think liked Allison, but they, they needed a, a avenue to bully and talk shit and harass people so they tried to pick that bone with me and i was at the doctor and it, it just is it's just ridiculous like you know i i do not agree with the way that you were treated when you did try to go into lisa and pagels i don't think you should have been name called you know or or whatever but you know, you got to understand, Queenie, you know, you kind of reap what you was sow. That, was that Lisa and Pagels or was it Morticia's? It was Lisa and Pagels okay. because here's what Queenie does. You know, when she knows that she's got, you know, I think she really regrets flipping sides and doing a lot of the stuff that she's doing because she's starting to realize that we were right the entire time. You know, that this little thing she wanted to do with boss up was probably not the best choice for her yeah. you know because she had real friends she had people that would talk to her every night she had you know chats that she can hang out in but she doesn't like that she likes to bully people she likes to get into the name calling and the mud slinging it that's, that's just what, that's she likes of doing people that this tier they'll go mud slinger nitpick with somewhere so they'll have something on their channel well they do. have to have a feud they have mm. they feel like they have to be feuding at all times with somebody and call for backup when they're feuding. and then call for backup and get a gang up going mm -hmm. you know and and it just gets it gets old so they wanted a gang bang on me that this day is our so view they in our opinion 
Yeah, so they, <laughs> they, they wanted to gangbang me that day, and I was at the doctor. I couldn't come in. I think Ray Ray kind of went on MERs and owned that whole chat and owned that panel anyway. Yeah, I didn't know who was live when you told me that somebody was live and they're talking smack and let everybody well, so, know we're at the so doctors. Here's, here's what she does, okay? Like, people think that she, you know, she likes to play her disability up, but she's actually pretty damn smart. Gwenny is smart. So she waits until there's a chat room full of people, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then a link will get put in the in the in the chat. Yeah. So she likes to go up on those panels because she knows it's going to trigger the people that she has bullied and they're going to fight back with her. And then everybody in that chat's going to see, oh, well, they're messing with the disabled girl, you know, and rally for her and be like, oh, Queenie, don't leave. Oh, Queenie, you know, don't bully Queenie. Don't do this. Even though, you know, she does 10 times worse to other people. Do I agree with the way that Bliss and Boss treated her that day? No. You know, but they actually make some pretty good points about her troublemaking ways. You know, she likes to start trouble and then she likes to gang up on people. So a lot of people don't really know Queenie. So they don't see her going around um, calling people names, talking shit about everybody, uh, making videos on people. But then she'll go on these panels where nobody really knows her that well. And then people will retaliate against her. And then it makes Bliss look bad and Boss look bad. You know, because she's popping up on these panels and everyone's going at her, but they, they don't see the other side of it. You yeah. know, they don't see the times where Queenie made, what, 10 videos on me and I never said the girl's name one time. Yeah. You know, they, they don't see that part of it, you know, and it, it just, it, it's unfortunate that, you know, she had to go, um, and say a bunch of stuff. And, you know, I never address this with you, Queenie. You know, one day you were on MER's panel, and I kind of caught wind of this, and you said that, uh, you know, we made you say certain things, and you were telling Tuna this, and I don't think that you thought out that response very well, because, you know, the whole reason you and I were not friends anymore was because you were not allowed on MER's panel to go up there and call Tina names. Because we wouldn't let you call her names because you had made a truce with her. Because you were the one, and I, I can bring out screenshots for days. And there's multiple we's in this situation. Yeah, on I, the we side. I'm, I'm going to get to that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, you know, you, I, I, can, I could show hundreds of examples of you going into Boss Up Chat saying tuna fish and... And, and, you know, making fun of people and talking shit. And then they would all come and uh, bully me because they couldn't just, you know, say anything to you. They would come accuse me of stuff. And I kept telling you I'd want to be out of it. You know, our whole group tried to keep you out of trouble, Queenie. So if we tried to control you, it wasn't to make you attack Tina. It was to make you stop attack attacking Tina. And when you say that we made you do certain things... You're not just saying me in this. Okay, Carrie was in our group. Texas was in our group. Crystal was in our group. Kickstand was in our group. Other people were in our group. And, and I know none... Carrie and Big Kiss didn't make you go say nothing. I know Barry, Carrie and Big Kiss. I know that. So when you go on panels and you lie, you know, it'd be one thing if you want to lie on me because we're all used to that. But don't go lie on other people, okay? You know, those we, we, we tried so hard to keep you out of trouble. When you'd want to start fights with MER and lie and say she called you all kind of names and we'd have to be like, no, she didn't. I mean, I could give hundreds of, of examples, <coughs> you know, but I really feel like it, at this point it doesn't even matter, Queenie. You know, I think a lot of people see this pattern of troublemaking behavior with you where you go to your little friends over there and you say, oh, they talked about me. They brought my name up. They did this. Nine times out of ten, it's not even true. And then you go, and when your friends don't want to play with you every day and talk to you every day, then you want to come back over and start coming into our chats and you go on your apology tours and, you know, things like that. Nobody, Nobody's interested, Queenie. You know, you and MER had a very good thing for a while. MER was going on panels. People were liking her personality. You know, everybody warned her about... Um, 
going back over to boss up that she was just being used for her panels and you know what's very telling to me is as soon as mer hides her channel and she's been laying low guess who turned on her hmm. just just guess take a wild guess i have no clue boss up oh they they think that she was involved with the plan to get isaac um on that panel of hers with yeah allison live and all that they think she was part of this setup. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't believe they really think that, but they're going to say that because she's not around to use anymore. Yeah. You know, and just remember, Amir, the people, the first time you got a strike, the people that you had around you, okay, and this time you were going to end up getting a strike because you weren't giving your, your platform away for freedom, honey. You were letting people get up there and bully and harass and do some really uh, foul shit. She was fairly warned about certain topics to stay away from by certain people, and she went straight there and and then lied know, about it. You know, I don't hate MBR, but that's the truth. You were right. warned. You know, if certain people warn you and they tell you straight up. And Team Truth <laughs> never said anything about calling CPS on you. You lied about that and made it up. You know, you guys want to you guys want to do and say all these things. But then when stuff comes back on you, y'all want to play the victim card and say that y'all are a victim of this and people are doing this to you. You know, I mean, it, it was getting way out of hand, MER. I mean, you had a person on that panel saying she wanted to see videos of me dying. Shit. I mean, who in the right mind, like, like who? It's just that's morbid and sick. And this is, this is one thing you brought up a minute ago about this tier that I've never understood. I've seen it happen time yet. Somebody will drop the link for some panel that's going on. And people will get on these panels that have nothing to add to it. You know, it's like, if you're not part of it, why are you going to get in there and just want to, you know... There's, been, there's, water, there's a I few guess. other people, there's a few people I've seen doing it. I'm not naming no names, but if you don't have nothing to add, why... Like, I've seen it, and I'm like, okay, I got nothing to do with this. I'll watch, but I ain't getting on that panel. there's a lot of, like, narcissistic people on this tier that think everything is about them. They just make it worse. It makes the whole situation tons worse, you know? And they just want attention. Queenie is one of those people. Like, she wants attention. When, and then she wants people to tell her that she's Unless right. Unless you have something relevant to add to what's going on at that point, then why get on the panel? When me and her got in that fight one night because we wouldn't let her on a panel, even though she was calling Tina all kind of tuna fishes 10 minutes beforehand, she goes live with, I'm so sick of you guys talking about Tina, even though 10 minutes before she was calling her all kind of tuna fishes. And she knew what would happen. Here comes Boss Up the next morning rolling into her chat. Yeah. You know, and it, it just, she wanted, she needed people to tell her that she was right and I was wrong. You know, just like when she went on Pagels the other day, she wanted people to tell her she was right and Bliss and Boss are wrong. Even though they're wrong for calling her names, if people knew the entire situation, they would know that Queenie's wrong because she causes trouble everywhere she goes. You know, she has to have drama. She can't just chill. You know, there was a whole grace period on YouTube for a little while where we actually all enjoyed each other's company. We'd all visit each other's chats, and it was a pretty cool time period. And now everything is just at such a toxic level, and it, there's certain little people that you notice everywhere they go, trouble follows them. And when there's no trouble, they make the trouble up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm over on Arizona's panel dealing with a Allison Live, and I'm getting called out for some bullshit, and at this point, I'm at the doctor's office in horrible pain. Yeah. You know, if that's not a troublemaker, <coughs> I don't know what is. Yeah, there was one, one instance you were on a panel with AZ, and another instance where you were at a doctor's office. We and doctor's then you have office. shady people like Victoria Cotton that changes their name, or, or trolls, and, well, no wonder you get called out, Jamie, with your mouth. <laughs> you know what, Victoria? No wonder you got called out for the way that you manipulate people and you cause drama, too. I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point. And you're very spiteful. It's like you can't just let stuff go. It is what it is. I mean, some people on this tier, they have real problems and they have real situations. You know, um, having to, you know, go to YouTube, it's supposed to be something that's fun, that keeps your mind off of your problems. That's what it used to do for me, you know. So lately, it's like I just can't get into the toxic waste dump and, um, you know, be happy anymore. And I think that's why I've taken such a big step back. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I still, you know, I don't go in chats much. You know, I'm careful about that. And, uh, just doing my own little channel thing. I mean, I, I mean I've been growing subs and growing views. Trying to do some relevant talk posts. Yeah, the your coronavirus world. videos scare me. <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, with the world at hand, you know, because this is, there's there's coronavirus. Uh, the CDC came out today with, you know, the U.S. should start preparing just in case something happens here, and they accidentally released a patient in San Diego, <laughs> the corona from the San Diego hospital. They released a dude. They accidentally released uh, him. I don't even but, want to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, and, and then there's a plague of lo locusts in Africa. I mean, it's, it's biblical plagues. It's, it's how it relates to biblical prophecy and how it could all play out in the end. You know, you got wars and rumors of wars. You got uh, Turkey and, and Syria going at it. And... So at the end of the day, some of this stuff just, it doesn't even matter, you know. Um, my biggest advice for you, Queenie and MER, is if y'all want to come back, just come back and chill. Like, you don't have to be fighting with people. You don't have to lie about people. Like, you know, the doxing people, the harassing people, the bullying people. Like, is that what y'all really want to be known for at the end of the day? That you added nothing intelligent to any conversation. That you called some people some cunts on the internet. And, you know, you made some people feel bad. I don't want to be I, known for that. Well, my channel, I just want to educate people and stuff, you know. And I want you want this channel to do the same thing with you. We've talked about so many about relevant topics we wanted to discuss and... Like AS today, we want to discuss that. I'd like you to know. see when somebody's down, instead of their enemies being like, oh, let's kick her because she's down, go to that person and be like, hey, are you okay? And like, pay it for it. I mean, be nice to people. Like, you don't know what kind of life people have outside of YouTube. You don't know what they're dealing with in their personal lives. And sometimes just a nice comment like Devada left me today. She didn't know that I had just gotten this diagnosis and that I had been crying all morning. You know, yeah. and, and it really lifted my spirits. And, you know, we all have problems. You know, we don't need to um, bully people to make ourselves feel better at the end of the day. Because it doesn't make me feel better to make somebody else feel bad. And if you're that kind of person, Queenie, that you like to bully people to make yourself feel better, then you really need to reevaluate your life. Mm -hmm. You really do. You know, and I, I noticed that it seems like a lot of the people that were bullied in high school have turned to YouTube and treated as high school. And they, in turn, instead of uplifting other people, want to bully people like they were bullied. You know, raise awareness for bullying. When you see somebody that's getting singled out and ganged up on, which has happened to me so many times in the last few months, you don't have to go gang up too. You don't have to chime in. You know, if you see somebody that's just getting it really hard, when Brie Bunny was getting it hard, it took a lot for me to stand up and say, hey, this is not okay. You know, she had done me wrong. She had made up lies on me. And I still stood against all the people that wanted to jump in on bullying her and join a bandwagon. And I stood up and I said no. Sometimes it takes one person to take a stand and say no. It does. You know, just, be that one person. You don't, not to be the follower, but you be the leader. You be the first one to stand up. And other, other people will fall in line behind that. You know what I'm saying? Because other people feel the same exact way. And I feel like I've done that <laughs> several times on this tier. And I better continue to do that. You know, I don't like to see the gang ups when one person is getting it pretty hard. You have to go gang up. You know, I mean, it, it's crazy. And I'm not trying to gang up on MER and, and Queenie right now. I'm just trying to give them some advice. You know, you guys can be attack. the better we're just person. Talking about things, we're not not attacking nobody. We're just talking. I know. You see, that's MER's favorite line: "Is I'm attacked. They attacked the MER." You know, no, you're not attacked, honey. Getting attacked is is you. you I don't even think you've ever really been attacked on this tier. Like y'all mm -hmm. don't even know the the hell that I've been through on this tier. You know, I mean, but you know, you guys see, you see, there's certain people that get picked on a lot. Instead of joining in, be that one person that says, hey, man, you know, that lady's going through a tough time right now. Or that dude's got it, got it rough, man. Do we all need to gang up and, and bully the same fucking person every day? No. No. You know, there's, there's more to life, you know. I mean, it takes sometimes one nice comment to make somebody's day. Yeah, you're right. And like um, Redneck said earlier, if anyone knows anybody with in closing spondylitis, 
um, you know, how, how do they cope? Like, what are some, you know, if you know anything, like, about it or, you know, any, any foods to stay away from, any, like, um, beneficial exercises or any kind of wisdom that stay you can bestow broccoli. upon me. Because I'm not going to do, I don't want to get trapped in the opiate crisis here. I don't yeah, well, want. Yeah, not, we're not going down the road. I'm not going to let no doctor prescribe, you know. The opiate crisis in America was created by doctors. I take them. That helps. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, Kratom has saved a lot of lives because the opiate epidemic in America is horrendous and it's destroyed so many lives due to a doctor just prescribing willy-nilly. And I'm glad we got to the day where now hardly doctors will prescribe certain things and are really careful about people who are doctor shopping. But at the same time, those are the <coughs> same doctors that don't want to believe you when you have pain. And it's yeah. sad because it would have saved me so much grief if I would have just been diagnosed. Yeah, I understand. But yeah, if, if anybody knows anybody with this, or you know, if you know anybody with coronavirus, run. No. But <laughs> if you know anybody with AS, if you want to be scared about <laughs> coronavirus, tune into Redneck Superman's channel. <laughs> yeah, I need to do a video about the symptoms. This is the same symptoms as a cold. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss sometimes. Like I try to tell you, I want to be ignorant to this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> No I put your I put your videos on mute and I like them and I smiley face and I thumbs we, up. <laughs> we need to have a discussion about preparedness though. Oh, preparedness. Well, yeah. maybe we can make that our next video. This a one's kind of running video. long. It is. We'll do a prepper video. Yeah, because I want I like to do videos of one subject. You know. And I kind of went all over the map, but it was this thing with Queenie's just been weighing really heavy on my heart because I don't want her to not be, you know, I don't want anyone to feel like they can't be a part I of care this community. About Queenie. I care about Queenie. Well, I, I just, care about MER and Queenie, but I, care I just about can't MER be too, But I need, to, I need to do that, that to be the final thing where we do care about you. We don't hate you. That's not the point. We're not attacking you, so there's no reason to go attacking us. I so. would just, you know, I would like to see you guys come back to the community, but in a different way. You know, prove some people wrong that you guys aren't just these little troublemaking bullies. But I mean, you look at your expect... highest rated video on this channel alone. It's not has nothing to do with the drama community. Once nothing. you start doing stuff outside the drama community, you can get views and you can get subs. I have 20,000 views on my... Um, That's what I'm talking about. On the McKamey Manor. McKamey, yeah. Video. Once you... Once you you're, this, this tier, you stay in this talking about drama, you stay stuck in this little rut. You know? And the drama community isn't all bad. There are some really supportive people. And I've made some really good friends, you know. Um, I really like Bunny. I really like No Mercy. Yeah, Bunny's cool, and I like No Mercy, too. You know. No I, Mercy is funny. I've been paying attention to Tara. I really like that chick. Yeah, she lays it on the line. You know, she's not one of those people that's always got to be on the panel. But, like, man, when she got something to say, yeah, she but just says she it has so straightforward. It. She has it. She's so, she comes in, she doesn't bullshit about it. She's relevant with what she says. So she calls out point. the bullshit and gets off. Yeah, and I you know. respect that in a person. <laughs> I, like, we love Lisa. Hey, I thought I was feeling the same way as you, Tara, and you said it. I know. It was like, for <laughs> Thank me, you. To, I didn't have to sit here and type that comment in a chat. <laughs> Next time I have a problem in a chat, some shit going on, I'm messaging Tara, tell her to show up. And I'd like AZ to, you know, keep doing what he's doing. Just stay out of the drama and, you know, he's a very. Like, I want to see a video about his Tibetan meditation bowl. Yeah. Matt Graham uses one of he used one on dual survival one day. That's where I know what it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he was trying to do yoga and he was trying to get Dave Canterbury or whatever to, to do it with him or whoever the guy it was. It, Matt Graham. No, who was that one soldier guy? Not Dave Canterbury, but the other guy. They got in trouble. Oh God, I know his He was his a name. piece of piece of crap. Okay, his name was uh, yeah. Joe. Joe. Joe Teddy. Joe Teddy. I think it was Joe Teddy. <laughs> well. Matt Graham is using the meditation Stolen bowl and, and doing yoga. Man. And Joe Ted is like, what the heck are you doing? I want to say it was Joe Ted Eye. Because I don't think Matt Graham ever did it, a show with Dave Canterbury. He did it. <laughs> but Dave Canterbury got his start on YouTube. He has, still has an amazing yeah. channel where he still does amazing vid videos. And some of that shit's pretty interesting. Yeah, right? I love dual survival shows. Me too. And I love you. And thank you for being you so too. supportive. I'm always here for you. We're always going to do it together. Till you get coronavirus... <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. I'm just. I'm not making light. But if anybody knows anybody with AS, and can have offer any tips, you know, or tell us anything, you know that, you know, if you suffer from it, I want to know. I want to know. 
I inquiring. I, I have an inquiring mind. I want to know. I need to find my people. You need to find your people. We got Jeffrey Vega. We found one of them. And Crystal. And Selvage. Crystal has it too. Well, that's amazing. And I, she's a woman. It is very rare for a woman to get it. That's what we called Pago earlier, and we told him. He's like, wow, you know how rare it is for a woman? To have it. And then yeah. me and Crystal both have it. Yeah. So So we're I'm sure we'll have more talks about, you know, um how she's coped with it because, you know, she has a child too and you know, it I'm sure it's affected her life and it's affected my life greatly. And um, you know, Ray Ray, you're still the biggest cunt on YouTube, darling. <laughs> uh <laughs> Ain't nobody taking your award, sweetheart. You are the biggest. You say it. Ray Ray, you're the biggest cunt on YouTube. <laughs> Ray Ray. <laughs> nobody will Ray take Ray. that cunt. But I'll call you tomorrow. Ray. Fuck um, you, Ray Ray. <laughs> I'm Nelson Green. Ray, give it that kids. <laughs> Ray Ray. All right, guys. <laughs> it's been real. Okay, Thanks for yeah, to it's my been rant. real. Y'all have a good one. America's the greatest country on earth. And we out.